Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics. This lecture is entitled Additional VHDL Topics, the If Conditional Statement. So an if conditional statement is always with it used with inside a process. Where does a process appear? It appears within an architecture. So here's an architecture. I've got a declaration section in it. The architecture of this guy, that's the behavioral description of blah, blah, blah. I've got those declarations. I begin my architecture, I end my architecture. So I've got within that begin and end of the architecture, I could have potentially some concurrent statements or whatever. Now I'm going to start a process. If you remember right, a process, it's sequential in nature. Whereas previously we have got some concurrent, uh, either happening all at the same time process, it's sequential. Process has a sensitivity list. What makes it ticks? What is its inputs and outputs? I'm going to begin the process. I'm going to end the process. Things inside here are part of that process. Additionally, very similar to our architecture, between the architecture begin and begin for the architecture, I could potentially have declarations within that process. Okay, for example, the previous lecture I dealt with variables. I could potentially declare a variable for this particular process. Between that beginning and the end process, we could put one of these conditional statements. And the one that we're going to talk about today is an if conditional statement. There's three types of if, and we're going to go over all three of them. And the example I use is those fire axes behind the glass in, for example, a public building or a dorm. What is the words on the side of those glass boxes with a fire axe inside? It says, in the event of fire, break glass and swing wildly. So it's a condition, you know, if there's a fire, break the glass and swing that ax wild. If there's no fire, don't break the glass and don't swing it wildly. So that's what a if statement is. If this condition is true, then do this, end the if. And that's exactly what VHDL uses, exact same sy syntax. If this condition is met, then do this expression, end the if. That's, by the way, within that process, okay? If that condition is not true, then don't do that. And what is that condition? Sometimes it could be a Boolean expression. If A is greater than B, then do whatever. If A is not greater than B, don't do it. You could also have some input. If active low clear is equal to one, then clear out such and such. If this, then that. If the condition is not true, then don't do that expression. Okay, so that is the simplest, simplest version of an if statement. Okay, there are other ways I could potentially do this if. What if there was two choices? If this condition is true, then do that expression. Else, evaluate another expression. Okay, so that's the second type of if. It would look like this. If this condition is true, then do expression one. Else, expression two. Okay, that's two choices and only two choices. If you want to think about it using those little programming diagrams, here's an evaluation of the condition. Yes, it's true. Do expression one. No, it's not true. Do expression two. So it's giving you an alternate path within that if statement. And again, it's this is within that process. Begin, end, process. Those final, whatever those expressions they're evaluating, are only, if they're signals, they are only assigned at the end of the process. If they're in variable form, you could potentially assign those variables sequentially. And we'll go into this when we get into some for loops a little bit later. Is there only two paths? No, sometimes there's multiple paths. And that's what's called the third type of if statement. Think about an if, else if. No, so you're, you're giving yourself alternate paths. If this, then that, else if, then that, else if, you know, there are several potential outlets for that evaluation. So how does an if, then, else if look like? It looks like this. So here's an example of an else if statement. And notice how I'm spelling this here. It's not else with an E, if, it's else if. And what this really is kind of saying, if condition one, do that. So there's three types of if statements, if then, if then else, if then else if, and they are all kind of just increasing the number of paths within it. This else if statement, it's kind of known as nesting, okay, nesting ifs. And if you could think about that, it's, it's evaluating that condition one. If that's not true, go on to condition two, evaluating that one. If that's not true, going on to condition three, and it's nesting through there. There are easier ways to 
write in ELSIF, and that's what's known as the case statement, which we'll go on to in our next lecture.